This is the last panel of the regulation and, uh, and, and rec tech at, uh, track. Obviously, it's the best, right? All right. Uh, the title is How Rec Tech May Help to Cope with New Regulation Challenges. And I hope that our free five panelists um, will shed light and either opine and say, yes, of course, it will, and, and, and that's how, or absolutely no chance, right? So, um, to start with, I'd, I'd love for everyone to introduce themselves individually, and if we could uh, start from, exactly. And I think that we have four, so two of you will have to share uh, microphones, please. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Hussein Kasai. I am the CEO and one of the three co-founders at Onfido. We look at ourselves as a rec tech company, and essentially our focus is around identity verification. So we help a little over 1,500 businesses verify the government IDs of their users. If you're a fintech company, then your users take a photo of their government ID and a recording of their face, and we use machine learning to verify that they are who they claim to be for K KYC and AML compliance. Hello, hi, my name is Ingo Ernst. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Forstop. We actually work with best-in-class data providers, not yet with Onfido, but hopefully soon, uh, to bring them all together in one single platform and in one single API. And that's how we try to alleviate some of the global pains of compliance in KYC. My name is Ivan Navalon. I'm the CEO of Electronic Identification. Electronic Identification is a company focus on product innovation for video identification for onboarding since new anti-money laundering uh, regulation coming up in Europe. Uh, we are doing this, this, this key piece of the, of the onboarding process. They've multiplied. <laughs> Hello, my name is Meredith Moss. I'm the CEO and founder of Phenomial. Phenomial is the first SaaS platform for client compliance throughout the life cycle. Our customers are uh, financial institutions who use Phenomial for the entire client life cycle from onboarding through ongoing AML KYC, um, FATCA, and CRS reporting. And despite the fact that I am coming from North America, shall we say. Um, our platform is um, particularly adept at geolocation of data and compliance with GDPR. Um, so that's a, a point that's very important for uh, global firms uh, serving across continents. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Luis Valdich. I'm a managing director with City Ventures. I'm based in New York and invest across uh, FinTech very broadly. Finance, obviously, RecTech, a very important element uh, thereof, but also in other areas of enterprise uh, technology, including you know, big data, artificial intelligence, and the like, uh, both in the US and in Europe and Israel. All right. So, um I would assume that everyone here is going to say, yes, of course, RecTech can help with regulatory challenges, right? If someone is going to say no, this, you're probably in the wrong panel, right? Do I get a, yes. do I get a like, Absolutely. Right, okay, so the issue is uh, uh, how, how easily and what are the different avenues, uh, which I'd love for you to you know, uh, start answering, probably from the venture point of uh, your own businesses or as, a, as, a, as an investor. But I'm going to add uh, an, an, another uh, vector of discussion, which is regulatory challenges can be viewed from the point of view of the entity that is being regulated, right? I.e., I'm going to discharge my regulatory burden uh, faster, easier, uh, cheaper, more transparently with a new startup. Uh, or a service provider that is providing a red tech solution. And additionally, I'm a regulator and I have challenges regulating and these types of red tech solutions are going to help me discharge my own regulatory burden, which is regulating uh, others. And in between these two, and depending on the technology that one uses, there's probably recursive hopefully virtuous circles that are going to make uh, regulation uh, better. Am I on the right, right track? Who wants to lead? I'll, I'll, All right. 
Um, so I, I think you're, you're spot on there. And I think it's, it's not a coincidence that every one of us on this panel are focused on regulations that have to do with the identity of your counterparty or your client. That's really different than what you would have seen several years ago on a reg tech platform. We would have seen transaction monitoring, um, suspicious activity reporting. And I submit that the reason that um, all of us are representing different uh, approaches or parts of this uh, client identification, counterparty identification, is because of new regulation um, on AML KYC, but even more so to Pascal's point, there is now a proactive uh, regulatory reporting requirement to the authorities through FATCA and CRS. Um, which requires uh, financial institutions, every single fund entity, fund structure, to submit an annual report uh, in, in a specified XML format, depending on the different um, regulatory regime. And that is um, kind of driving that virtuous cycle that Pascal is speaking about, the idea that the technology both helps internal processes as well as helps the regulators have uh, visibility to the data and the activity they're trying to regulate. Um, the thing that makes this such a, shift, a seismic change is, let me see a show of hands, people from financial institutions today. And then uh, another show of hands, people with more than one uh, uh, investment vehicle or financial account in your name. Oh, come on, this must be everyone. You have only one ATM account and that's it? So every one of us in this room has um, gone through the client onboarding process multiple times through multiple providers. Um, and in the past, this was governed by policies and procedures. An internal set of checklists will just fill out a spreadsheet or a checklist and, and we'll be done. Now that the regulators are requiring that proactive reporting, it's a, different, um, it's, it's a different world we live in. Anyone wants to piggyback off of that? Well, I think what we see is that the only constant thing with regulatory on an international and local level is constant change. So there's really always a change happening. There's lots of dynamics. And we see even different providers in the same vertical kind of attack the same subject with different kind of coverage, working with different data providers and constantly trying to keep up when expanding as well. So that's where we kind of take a look at everybody in the market who has the best solution and trying to bring them together because we have had very different feedback from the regulatory framework and bodies when it comes to what is actually compliant and what is not. So I think we're still in that very dynamic field of where change is ongoing. And it's not necessarily new. So if we take RegTech as using technology to ensure regulatory compliance, this has been going on for decades. The couple of factors that have happened in the last five or so years that has made it somewhat different or important is, on the one hand, business models have changed. So you have half the world's adult population who are under or unbanked and therefore have no access to financial services. And you have the other half who have access but haven't always received the best service. So you had the rise of fintechs and online banks who, in many ways, put the customer needs first and were able to offer these services. But the fintechs did not have the same resources as a, a mainstream bank with uh, many thousands of workers and, and sort of support staff. Therefore, that gave rise to regulatory reg tech providers, which essentially use sophisticated technology, be it machine learning or otherwise, to help the fintechs be as scalable and as secure, but with far fewer resources in a lean way. So this business model drive was a big part of it. The second part of it was regulation. And since 2008 in particular, there have been one after the next. It's most recently GDPR, PSC2, and a host of other things. And it's the ability to offer services to customers while not jeopardizing the customer experience while being compliant. And when you're talking about innovation in the financial space, that always carries a risk. Because in, in some parts, uh, especially if the individuals do not have strong financial literacy or many options, there is scope for exploitation. And to your question on how do we, be it regulators, fintechs, reg tech providers, and, and mainstream banks and institutions, financial institutions, how do, wh why do they all work together? It's in many ways to, if we have the FCA, for instance, in the UK, the Financial Conduct Authority, and a sandbox, industry sandbox, 
where all the different parties are taking one step at a time forward to ensure that everyone is essentially both consistent and adding value in the right way. So those are some of the business model changes and technology changes that have made RegTech particularly important in recent times.